Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here in the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie, Iowa. And look what Baxter Cycle has laid out for us today. This is going to be a real treat. I've wanted to ride one of these for quite a long time. But wait a minute, I have rode these before. Well, today we're going to do at least 100 miles on it. It's really set up well. I love the seat on it. I love the uh, wind protection. It's got a larger tank than the regular one. This is a 349cc single overhead cam, two valve engine. Cranks out about 20 horsepower and about 20 foot-pounds of uh, torque. That's about 27 newton meters. Has a wonderful five-speed transmission. It's just a real joy. I've, I've got the same engine and transmission on my uh, Royal Enfield Classic, and it, it's just the more I use it, the better I like it. And this one has the actual heel shifter on it, so we're going to make a point of using that today. The wheelbase on something like this is 55.1 inches. That's about 44. I'm, I'm sorry. That's about 1,400 millimeters. Uh, that's the longest wheelbase of the 350s that they have right now. Ground clearance is about 6.7 inches, which shows. I think you can see that. It actually looks more than that. That's about 170 millimeters. The seat height, this is the key difference. Or one thing that you should think about when you talk about a meteor. The seat height is 30.1 inches. That's 765 millimeters. That is the lowest seat height in your seat. The uh, other thing you can do with this bike is they sell shorty shocks. BaxterCycle.com sells them. They're, I think, about an inch shorter, so it'll lower the seat about an inch. And uh, between that and you can raise this up a little bit here, you might be able to gain another inch, inch and a half, or something like that. And I also believe they sell a shorty seat, a, sheet, a seat that is more contoured. So if, if height is a concern of yours, this is a really good model to look at. Weight of this motorcycle is, with a full tank of fuel, 421 pounds. That's about 191 kilos. And the gas tank, like I said before, is four gallons, 15.1 liters. As far as the weight goes, I gotta throw this in. My, my Classic weighs 10 pounds more than this. And when I go in my garage, I throw my leg over my Classic. It is by far the easiest motorcycle I have to maneuver around. It, it's lower to the ground. The center of gravity is ultra low. It's got a short wheelbase. The amount of turn in the, in the uh, handlebars is so much that it, it's just so super maneuverable in a garage. We'll, we'll get into that here later. Uh, other things to talk about, I think it's uh, 5.1 inches of travel here. These are 41 millimeter forks. So 5.1 inches of travel. And that is, I think that's 130 millimeters. And on the rear, it's three and a half inches of travel, which is 89 millimeters of uh, travel. The front tire is a 190-19, and the rear is a 140-70-17. Nice wide tire in the back. I think the brakes on these are a 300 millimeter disc. It's a twin pot vibrary. Twin pot means there's two pistons, anti anti lock or ABS. And then I think the black the back is a 270 millimeter disc with a single pot vibrary brake. So let's just take a quick look at the looks. Uh, other things that this might have. I want to mention the windshield right away. This is the Supernova Brown. They also have Supernova Blue. And they also have Supernova Red. I just did a video on the Supernova Red. Uh, but they all come with this windshield. They all come with this beautiful backrest. They've all got this, you know, just gorgeous three color paint. Got this brown here, the silver stripe, and then the black. Carries on through here, a little red 350 there. The thing that I really want to point out, this is a gigantic metal badge. You know, raised letters, black background, just absolutely gorgeous. Very, very well done, you know. Big chrome pipe. You know, the milling on the ends of the head there, you know. The faux air cleaner there. And, uh, I mean, just beautifully done. Beautifully done. The loop frame. You know, I like the way that looks. That's To me, that's good looking. That muffler, like I said, that's just that whole row of chrome there, you know. Lots of little details that really stand out. I love these levers, you know. I've mentioned that before. The levers on these 350 are just to die for. If you ever get to a dealer, get down here to Baxter Cycle and try these out. Not only are they, they swept well, but they've got a good amount of radius on the sides. And then, of course, the barrel-shaped grips. And I've talked about that before. You know, how they are, are both soft and hard. <laughs> Look at this chrome, you know, chrome there on the gas cap. Beautiful dash area. The seat, you know, with the piping, the pewter-colored piping. Just a gorgeous thing. The milling on the back, the metal milling on the back of this rest. Everything is just the chrome, chrome blinkers, you know, front and back. Chrome ring on the tail light, just everything is just right. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there is a light that goes all the way around here. Probably can't see it in the daytime, but uh, it's all the way around. It's just kind of a really pretty thing. Very well done on their part. Okay, uh, we are going to hop on that hot rod and we are going to take that for a nifty 100 mile ride. We'll stop a couple times and uh, we'll go over something like the uh, how it sets, how it handles, how it does all those neat things. 
Right now I'll get my helmet on and we are going to hit the road. Wahoo! Five, four, three, two, one. The info button is right here. Pass to flash. Flash to pass is right there. High lows. The blinkers, horn. Over on this side it's the kill switch, run switch, start switch, and then the hazard lights. Fuel right there of course. Of course the brake lever over here and the clutch over here. The uh, clutch has an adjuster right here. It also has an adjuster down here. My Himalayan only has it down here, so that's a very nice touch on their part. Jumping up to the dash, it's got this beautiful, I call it an Oculus, it's this beautiful analog speedometer on the top. For those of you my age, you appreciate that. It's got this arching uh, fuel gauge right there. And then uh, a clock, a gear indicator, which I just love gear indicators. Of course, the odometer right there. Then over here, we we'll use this button here. We can go from odometer to trip A, which we're at zero. And then trip B, which is 0.06. Jumping over here, we've got the trip meter, which is a nav system. You use that with, a, with the uh, app, the Royal Enfield app, and that'll give you turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions, tell you how far you've got to go and things like that. But isn't this just pretty right through here? All the chrome, everything is just done right. Everything looks right. It's just a good-looking motorcycle. Let's see what she does. Wahoo. Great sound. Okay. Let's do a little spin test here. Look at that, huh? I love the forward controls. If you're in the market for a new used Royal Enfield, Triumph, or vintage bike of any type, get yourself down here to Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa. Go to BaxterCycle.com. They can help you out. Ask for that guy there, Randy, Jeremy, Mark, or Amanda. They also have a complete supply of accessories for these bikes. T-shirts, backpacks, clothing, coats, all the fun stuff. Gloves like these beautiful Royal Enfield gloves I got on. Those of you that watch my channel a lot know how much I like spinning around in circles. Look at that, look at that. I forget the wheelbase. This had 55.1 inches, so this is the longest wheelbase of the uh, 350s. Hey, I'm gonna get ran over. We'll get off the road there. We would have made it if it wasn't for traffic. All right, y'all. I will catch up with you shortly. Wahoo! We have made our way to Lake Anita State Park. We'll just do a quick buzz through down here, check it out. We've got about 22 miles on the bike so far. This is a really pretty park, one of my favorites. State parks are like motorcycles, I love them all. A lot of times you'll see deer eating out here in this little wetland area. Anyway, the motorcycle, I am in a very comfortable spot. It's a nice wide seat, very comfortable seat. My knees are probably, my legs, the upper part of my legs are probably level with the ground and my heels are probably directly below my knees or slightly forward, so the controls are forward. So it's pretty comfortable, it's a forward control, it's a cruiser for sure. My back is straight up and down, and my arms seem to be in a natural position for the bars. I mean, look at that, they're in the right spot. The bars reach back towards me. As far as handling goes, in the garage the bike is excellent. It's got a very low center of gravity, the, you know, it turns lock to lock quite a distance. It's very responsive, easy to move around. And that's what I like about my classic. It's the same way, it's just very easy to move around. Uh, in town, the thing is, is a dream. It works very well. The torque is all at the bottom. The clutch is excellent. Small. Now, I, I don't know if y'all can see that there's a deer. There's two deer over here. There's one over there. We'll just kind of put our way through them. One, two, there goes one running right there. See his white tail? And over here on our right, check them out. Isn't that something? I'd say that's 30 feet away from us. Those are does most likely. Let's get out of their hair. We don't want to bother them. That other one's over there just sitting there. Back to the motorcycle, the power is excellent. Power from zero to 65 is fabulous on these bikes. This 350 is just a real winner. Great day to be alive. It's about in the 80s right now. It's a beautiful day to be outside. Lake Anita is located in west central Iowa just east of Atlantic, Iowa, just off of Interstate 80, maybe a mile or so south of the town of Anita. Well, next stop, we'll talk a little more about the handling on the highway and the comfort. All right, we'll catch up with you all later. We are rolling in on the Iowa Freedom Rock. This is north of Greenfield, about 11 miles, Greenfield, Iowa. This is painted every year for the last 25 years. Every year it's a new paint job, except for the helicopter. show you that here in a second. The helicopter remains the same because the ashes of 130 veterans are in that helicopter. Oh, there's a whole herd of uh, bikers over yonder. Isn't that pretty? 
this is this year's, uh, he just, every Memorial Day it's redone. In May they paint it white and then, except for the helicopter, and then by uh, Memorial Day it's just a gorgeous thing, gorgeous thing. So Iowa has 99 counties and every county in Iowa has a Freedom Rock. This is the original one and this is the one that's repainted every year. Okay, let's do a little uh, back on the road again stuff here. Very nice. We're at 65 miles into our journey, by the way. So the bike itself, I love the way it sits. I'm very happy with that. And the cluster, the gauge cluster, those of you who have watched my classic videos on my Royal Olympic Classic have heard me talk about it. You can't see the gauges when you're riding the bike. On this one, they're absolutely visible. Totally in your, in your line of sight. Very comfortable, easy to look at. And I also like the fact that it has a gear indicator and a visible clock, all the time visible clock. My Classic has a clock, but you have, to, you have to use the information button to get to it. As far as the riding position goes, it's an excellent riding position. I, I think I could ride this across the state of Nebraska and back. It's just very comfortable. I like how the bars reach up to me. Uh, the handling on the highway is superb. Of the three Royal Enfield 350s, the Hunter is the sportiest. The Classic, in my opinion, the best looking, is a medium sport, medium cruiser. And then this is the ultimate, this is the cruiser style, the biggest tank, best highway bike, best long ride ride bike, I would say. If I had to ride two or 300 miles in a day, this is definitely the one I would ride. And having said that, that is the interstate. Look at the windmills. The wind is gonna be at our back and we are gonna do just a few miles of wind because, or we are gonna do a few miles of interstate because the road is closed over yonder. So let's see what kind of acceleration we can get out of this. There's fourth gear. By the way, the mirrors are pretty darn good on this one. Yeah, the guy got over and let us over. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We are in fifth gear going uh, just about, well, right at 70 now. I don't know if these are speed limited or not. I know the Classic is for sure, and I think the Hunter is too. Let's see if we bounce off the uh, speed limiter. Yes, it is speed limited. We are bouncing off the speed limiter. I'm gonna slow down. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, as far as performance here on the interstate goes, like I said, we're going 70-ish. The bike's very stable. It's got the little bit longer wheelbase. I like it. All right, y'all, catch up shortly. Wahoo! Howdy, y'all, Fuzzy Biker. We have made it back to Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa. And uh, I've got a little over 100, I think 103 or 104 miles on this hot rod. Had a lot of fun and I've really got, I've got an opinion. I've been thinking about it for the last 30 miles. 103.7 we did on it. And uh, it's really quite a motorcycle. I would say of the 350s, it is the most mature, most mature, the most, uh, it's the best handling, most stable handling, I would say, most stable handling, best on the highway. We did a little bit of interstate. It's got the best amenities, the best fit and finish. You know, all the details, especially the Supernova, but all the little details. I like the forward controls. I like the low seat. This seat is so wide and so comfortable. I just enjoyed the heck out of that. You know, I love the backrest on it. Every motorcycle should have one of those. And this here, this piece here, I was uh, on the interstate for a little bit and I was really paying attention to that. And it, it really kept the wind off your chest. You know, your head was in the open air, but that kept it off your chest. So you didn't feel the pressure on your arms, you know, from that. Uh, the mirrors on this, speaking of things like that, the mirrors are relatively clear. I've got that super classic or that classic over yonder. The mirrors are not clear on that one. It's the same engine, but on this one, they were actually very doggone clear. The other big one is this. This is absolutely visible. It was, it was right there the whole time. Just excellent. Uh, the one thing though is the blinkers are still down low, which aren't really that much of a problem, I guess, but I would like them up higher. And the other thing about this bike is it has this nav system. I did not use it. I have used it on other bikes. But... So what would I do if I had this bike for myself? I would put the larger foot pegs on and I would definitely put some bags on it. You know, somewhere to put your things when you're going down the road. As far as anything else goes, you know, the foot pegs, the bags, I don't know what else you would really need. Everything's there. Good looking motorcycle. The most mature, the best, the best of the highway bikes, the best overall handling, uh, the most stable, the least sporty handling, but yet the most stable. This is the be best looking as far as fit and finish and chrome pieces and all the little things that are, you know, this is the mature bike, like I said. Is it, does it have the zen factor? I don't know how to answer that. Uh, I've given that a lot of thought too, and it it does have it in a two degree, but not to the same degree that my classic has it. And I was trying to think of why would that be? What's so different about it? One is, I think it's the seating position. 
And I also think it's the uh, fact that you can see the gauges. You're always responsible because of the gauges. On that bike, the gauges kind of hide away and you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere, you know. In this one, you you can see the bike. On that one, the bike kind of disappears. Our next one that we're going to try to get a, a ride of the week on is, uh, they've got an interceptor in there that's kind of special. They've done some things to it and uh, we're going to try to get that out next week. And the other one I'm still working on is a uh, Scram 411. I want to do 100 miles on a Scram 411 and see what that thing's all about in a long ride. But uh, anyway, if you are in the market for a newer used Royal Enfield Triumph, Triumph right there, used vintage bike of any type, get yourself down here to Baxter Cycle. If you need accessories, bags, apparel, like, you know, like, like this beautiful shirt I have on right now, get yourself down here to uh, Baxter Cycle. If it's nice where you're at, get out and ride. Wahoo!